Dennis, welcome. Good to have you with us. I, I Tyler guess, and Morgan, thanks for having me on again. I thanks guess what leaps out to me is it's not easy being supreme leader, especially when supreme leaders' policies aren't working very well. This is probably the worst day for Xi Jinping since he became head of China in 2012, and it looks like it's going to get worse. And, and you would describe this, what, as second only to Tiananmen Square in terms of the threat uh, and, the, and the visibility of the protests that we're seeing? There have been no threats to the Chinese leadership since Tiananmen Square in 1989. And this is the first time, I think, in multiple cities in China you've seen, and I don't know how many people were on there, your reporter just was talking about that, but there's major dissatisfaction of the Chinese people with the government. And we haven't really seen that in more than 30 years. So let's talk about, let's talk to boards of U.S. companies that may have operations or be dependent on, on supply from China. Uh, it's late, you know, the, the, it seems like the, the cup of coffee is mostly drunk over there. Uh, it's late to be making changes, but companies can't be as dependent on China as they have been. Isn't that obvious? Tyler, if CEOs and board of directors needed a wake up call, this is it. Now, a lot of them have been saying, well, things are going to be getting better. The elephant in the room here is the rela relationship between China and the U.S. on a political basis. And if that continues to get worse, the opportunity for reliable sources of supply and commodities and products, you talked about iPhones a few minutes ago, is really going to drop. That's why I think you're going to see boards, hopefully, if not for the first time, in their next board meeting, sit down with the CEOs and say, where are we? How committed are we to China? Should we diversify? And if they're sole sourcing out of China, I think they're late to the party, but it's time to do it. So how quickly can it be done? If you're an Apple, for example, we were just having this conversation where maybe you are starting to see some diversification in the supply chain, but not, not necessarily in a meaningful or major way in the near term. How quickly can you actually pivot and make those, make those moves happen? Morgan, when I was on your show a couple of months ago, we talked about Apple. It started to look at China. About 5% of Apple's phones are now produced in India. I think you're probably going to see that raise to 30 or 40 percent. But as you pointed out, nothing happens immediately. It takes time to get it done. That's why I think boards have to give this a really top priority, because in the past, companies said, well, I don't know about the financial problems. But now there's not just a financial problem. There's a reputational problem. How does Apple look going into Christmas or the holidays in a couple of months from now saying we're not going to have enough phones for you? These are the kind of pressures that I think board of directors have to put on the CEOs and the C-suite level people to say, what are you doing? The flip side of this is you have companies that manufacture in China who may be looking to diversify, but you have many companies, many international companies, many American companies that are looking to sell in China and into China as well. So how do companies walk that line uh, and continue to appease, continue to drive sales and continue to appease their investors, but also potentially appease the leadership of a country that uh, is going into even fuller crackdown right now? I think Xi Jinping has told you what China's future is going to be. He's not going to double down. He's going to triple down now on the, the COVID-19 uh, problem that your, your reporters were talking about a few minutes ago. So ultimately, I think companies are going to have to make a balancing judgment. Obviously, the, if the Chinese market is the only market you have, then you probably have to go along with this. But as the global market is changing, changing and you've seen what's happened to the supply chain really over the last three to four years, I think it's time that tough decisions are going to have to be made. And that's why the CEO and boards are there. And I think it's time to stop putting their head in the sand and say, how am I going to make these decisions?